This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Lenovo Yoga 900S. The S model is the thinner and lighter model, meaning that, well, you guess you can't get too thin, too light, or too bendy, flexible yoga-y. This is a 2.2-pound convertible, obviously, Ultrabook with a touchscreen, and it supports the Lenovo Wacom AES pen, the newer kind of pen. This is the ThinkPad Pen Pro, they call it. Not included, so you're going to have to buy this one separately. Thin, light. Uh, very blingy. If you thought the HP Spectre was kind of out there, if you get it in this champagne gold color right here, you can see just how blingy it is. It has the watch band hinge. You got both gold and silver going on. Now there's also, for those of you who find this a little too blingy, there is the silver option. So it's silver and it's black. Intel Core M inside, a typical of these thin and light ultrabooks because there's not a lot of room for cooling here, so no fan's going to be quiet. And it has a 12.5 inch display available in 1080p or QHD, your choice. We're going to look at it now. So how about build quality for our $1,100 model here? We have the base model with the Core M5, 4 gigs of RAM and 128 gig SSD. Uh, Lenovo has a way with the yogas, some, uh, making a finish that doesn't look as expensive as the laptop actually is. That's my feeling on it. This looks... I don't know, you know? But the colors are certainly interesting on this, and you have the two-tone watch band hinge going on here, and the watch band hinge is held up well. Lenovo's been doing that for a couple of yogas now, and it gives you the literal flexibility to use this as a tablet in tent mode and so on, or flat. You can even use it flat if you want. So there it is in tablet mode. You can do it in tent mode. That's kind of handy on an airplane tray table, or if you just want to watch a movie or something like that. No stand required. It's a, a nice versatile design. The hinge is nice and stiff on it too. So given that it's a touchscreen, we do care about that. So when you poke at it, I mean, there's a little bit of movement there, but it's not that bad. All touchscreens bounce a little bit if you tap at them. The stereo speakers, which are pretty decent given the size of the machine, are over here. And removing the bottom is as simple as removing these exposed Torx T5 screws here. Nothing hidden under the rubber feet or anything like that. Pretty straightforward. Unscrew them. The cover is pretty easy to get off. There's some plastic clips, but not that bad. And you have access to the M2 SSD in here and the socketed wireless card. And of course, the battery. RAM is soldered on with this model, so get it with the amount of RAM that you want. You can't upgrade it later. Well, it certainly has more ports than the single port on the 12-inch MacBook, but not as impressive as the HP Spectre that had two Thunderbolt 3 ports and a USB-C port. This is the proprietary charging connector, and it also acts as a USB 2.0 port. And this is what the charger looks like. Sort of a tablet-style charger, but it is a full 45-watt charger. And you also have a USB-C 3.1 Gen 1 port, 5 gigabit per second. So that is compatible with... USB drives and also with displays and it does support charging as well. It is not Thunderbolt 3. And on this side we have the power button since well you might be using it as a tablet or something like that and you can't access the power button on the inside then or on the back side really. And here's the headphone jack and here is a USB 3.0 port. So not as many ports as a standard full-size Ultrabook. Obviously that's the price you pay for having something that is only 2.2 pounds and 12.5 inches footprint. It is a half inch thick at its thickest point. So it's pretty darn slim. So how about the keyboard? Well, first, the keyboard deck has the usual yoga interior. It's that kind of pebbly, rubbery interior that I have no issues with. It feels nice and it's kind of a soft thing. The trackpad is not exactly huge, but it's fine. It's not the best. It's not the worst among Windows 10 trackpads, but these days they're all pretty usable. The keyboard, well, the good news is it's backlit. The bad news is that the travel is really low. I mean, it makes the Dell XPS 13 and the HP Spectre with 1.3 millimeter key travel seem luxurious. This is about 1.1 millimeter, and it it's precise feeling enough. Uh, it's not exactly like the 12-inch MacBook that has clicky switches instead, either of them. I'm not in love with it. I tried typing several reviews with it, and I never really warmed up to it. A typist's keyboard, it's not. We have normal FN row up here. That's awesome. But keep in mind also, because we have the embedded page up, page down keys going on here, that the right shift key is truncated. That probably will throw you off at first that it is not a double wide like the shift key on the other side. Otherwise, it's, it's pretty much a normal keyboard. 
So how about performance? This again is a Core M. So that sits below the Intel Core i line, like the i5 and the i7. Performance wise, it, it benchmarks somewhere between the Core i3 and i5 CPUs. And that's because it has a very aggressive turbo boost. The base clock speeds on the Core M are slow. Our low end model has the Core M5 6Y54 processor, and these are Skylake CPUs. Its base clock rate is 1.1 gigahertz, but it can go much higher than that. Hence, again, the benchmarks look pretty good. So 2835, especially with the fast PCIe SSD in there. Well, that really helps performance numbers in PC Mark 8 as well. You can get it with the Core M7 6Y75. That's 1.2 gigahertz. So it's a bit better performance there, but the nice part is Lenovo bundles it with the 8 gigs of RAM, which is really better for most people these days, especially for future proofing, and a bigger 256 gig PCIe SSD versus R128. R128 gig PCIe SSD only had about 56 gigs available out of the box after installing Windows updates, and that's just not a lot of places to store your programs. Obviously, you can put files, media files, and things like that in flash drives or USB drives, but just installing programs, and it's getting tight already. And here's our Geekbench 3 number, 2580 single core, 5282 multi-core. We always use the 64-bit version of the test. If this was a core i5, we'd expect a number near 7,000 for the multi-core test. Still, it's not bad. If This sort of machine is really not meant to be your main machine. It's meant to be your portable partner. And it has certainly enough oomph to do things like stream full HD video easily and do MS Office work, some light coding, that sort of work. This is not your video editing rig. This is not your gaming rig. This is not for the people who have demanding stuff that they need to do daily, crunching a lot of numbers, you name it. You know who you are, those of you who tax your laptops heavily. This one is for lighter use. The Yoga 900S is available with your choice of a 19 by 1080 IPS display with pen, active Wacom AES digitizer and touch or a QHD 2560 by 1440 IPS display, also with pen and touch. We have the 1080p model here. It's a nice enough looking display, but uh, the color gamut's not really that impressive. You can see we have 69% of sRGB. For laptops and convertibles priced around $1,000, we expect to see a, oh, about 100% of sRGB coverage. And it only does 52% of Adobe RGB. Gamma at least is perfect at 2.2, and so is the white point at 6,600 degrees Kelvin. Often we see displays that are much too high in terms of white point, which makes the whites look kind of blue. It has 287 nits of brightness, and that's, that's fair for the price range, and it's bright enough to be used in bright indoor locations. Outdoor, well, it is a glossy display, so you're going to have to fight glare there. Black levels are good at 0.38 at maximum brightness, so that works out to a 750 to 1 contrast ratio. The Yoga 900S has a Wacom AES digitizer. That's their newer kind of digitizer. Costs a bit less. I actually like it. It has less problems with edge accuracy, uh, less parallax, that sort of thing. 2048 levels of pressure sensitivity. Works fine for note taking. This is Windows Journal here and Yes, I have terrible handwriting, but it works just fine for note-taking, honestly. And the Core M has enough horsepower for doing this sort of thing, including turning your handwriting into text, which you can do with a variety of programs, including OneNote. That's a popular program to use for inking. Now, for artwork, if you're use, an advanced user who's using heavier applications, something like, say, Corel Painter 2016 or Photoshop with lots of layers, this might not be the machine for you because it's not going to be that quick and you might notice a little ink lag. We're going to try with Clip Studio Paint to see how it goes there. By the way, this pen is not included. Like I said, this is the ThinkPad Pro Pen. They call it a Pen Pro. It's $40. It's not too expensive. No eraser on the end, but it does have two buttons on the side here. There is no skinny little toothpicky kind of pen included that sticks into the side of the body like we saw with the ThinkPad X1 Yoga. And now we're in Clip Studio Paint as a popular art program and you can see the pressure sensitivity. I got a light line, I have a heavy line that's much darker. It's fairly fluid, there's not too much lag if you do the usual kind of crazy circle test. It starts to lag a little bit, but in natural drawing, and I'm a pretty fast drawer, I have no problem with the speed at which it keeps up in this program. But this is a fairly simple one-layer canvas here. It's not, you know, 
if you're doing a serious artwork, again, with many layers, that sort of thing, you'll notice the core M lagging a little bit at times, but it's nothing that I would call horrible for casual sketching, that sort of thing. So how about battery life? These th super thin and light small laptops typically have not had the greatest battery life. Even the 12 inch MacBook, depending on what you use it for, it can go nine hours, sometimes it only goes six hours. So Lenovo is claiming 10 and a half hours of streaming video use, and that's pretty darn, well, aggressive. And often Lenovo, like most PC manufacturers, is overly optimistic. In this case, they're not wildly optimistic, though, because this thing is mostly battery, as you saw from the internals photo. It, it's four cell, 53 watt hour battery. That's a bigger battery than a lot of Core i5 13.3 inch Ultrabooks have. And in this case, on average, doing productivity and streaming video work, we did manage eight and a half to nine hours on a charge. Now, if you're going to be taxing it hard, if you're going to be editing video, good luck to you on the Core M. It's not the most joyous experience to do that, but you can do it. Uh, or anything that's going to tax it more, then you'll get shorter battery life. But using this as it's intended, mostly for productivity, streaming video, a little artwork, drawing with the pen, that sort of thing, uh, Photoshop even, it, it'll certainly do well in terms of battery run times. So where does the Yoga 900S fit in among the com competition? Now, there aren't so many ones with the 360 degree hinge specifically, but there is a sort of competition here. This is on this side here, the black one, that's the Toshiba Portage Z20T. It is also Intel Core M 12 and a half inch display, but it is heavier and thicker with the keyboard dock, but it has a detachable keyboard dock with lots of ports on board. So it's really more like a full laptop replacement that happens to also be a detachable tablet. And that comes with a Wacom EMR pen, the older traditional pen technology from Wacom. And the pen is in the box. In fact, too, there's a little emergency pen included with the Z20T, which is a teeny, teeny, really toothpick kind of stylus that's included that fits in the body. And then there is Surface Pro 4, which actually, if you're looking at the Core M version with the keyboard, which is going to cost you a little bit extra, is still going to be cheaper than the Yoga 900S. Of course, it's also really more of a pure tablet designed with the detachable keyboard here. We have the zingy blue one. But you know what? Even though this is the oddball keyboard, I actually like it better. It has more key travel. It's more tactile. It's more pleasant to type with. I, I like typing on this, whereas I couldn't get along with the 900S's keyboard. Pen is included, and that uses an Entrig digitizer. And for those of you who really don't need or want the convertible design so much or the pen feature, you just want something that's really thin, small, light, and well-made, the obvious competitor here is the 12-inch MacBook, which has a smaller footprint. It also has fewer ports. It also runs Mac OS and does best running Mac OS versus Windows. So keep that in mind. And of course, it is more expensive. <laughs> and then there is the HP Spectre, which somehow now looks almost understated next to our Champagne Gold Yoga. It only has the blingy gold along the back here. 13.3 inch, also a non-touch conventional laptop, but very light, two and a half pounds. But you get bigger screen, 13.3 inches, and you get full Intel Core i5 and i7 CPUs, starting at 1169. So also, you know, very competitive in terms of price, but it doesn't yoga, it doesn't have the pen, it is just a straight laptop. And in terms of footprint, you can see the difference here. It's, there you go. And lastly, in our comparison, there is the Dell XPS 13 sitting on top of the Yoga. Incredibly small footprint for something with a 13.3 inch display. Now, again, it's a conventional laptop design. It is available with a touchscreen, if you like, but there's no pen technology and it doesn't flip, spindle, do any neat features like the Yoga does. But if, again, if you're looking for something that's more like a laptop, there it is. Now, the XPS 13 is not cheap. Uh, it's starting around $999 or so with a Core i5 inside, and that's for the 1080p display. If you want the higher resolution display and even fancier internals, it can quickly hit $1,500 and above. So that's the Lenovo Yoga 900S. It's available now. Again, 1100 to 1300 US dollars for this product. Now, the thin and light market's getting pretty hot and heavy right now. 
pun intended, uh, but this is one of the few that's also a convertible. So if you're looking for something that has a touch screen that does the yoga thing that can be flipped into a tablet and works with a pen, uh, there's not a lot of competition out just yet directly, a couple of models, but anyway, it's enough to make the 900S something that I can recommend as long as you don't need the horsepower of a Core i5 or Core i7 inside. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full written review and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos.